Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of Amateur Radio Station, W1GV. At your service, to answer a couple, three questions about short wave receiving antennas, in particular, random wire antennas in the attic. Um, now, when you have an antenna in the attic, I presume that that means you live in a frame house and uh, that most likely your uh, landlord or your, uh, what do they call that, association of homeowners, like if you're in a townhouse, that they won't let you put up an antenna outside. Um, although I've thought about putting up a, a random wire receiving antenna in my attic, uh, for the purpose of uh, receiving ham radio in the high frequency part of the spectrum, which coincides with the short wave radio spectrum, that is roughly 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz. If you put an antenna in the attic, you're somewhat safer from direct hits by lightning, but not completely. I, I don't want to leave you with the illusion that you don't have to use any form of lightning. Uh, uh, protection, I, I, lightning protection as if you're protecting the lightning. You don't have to take any measures to protect your radio from lightning. That is not true. You, you ideally should. And there are a couple of ways to do that. One way you can do that is to use a large loop antenna instead of a random wire. A large loop. Now when you do that, particularly if you feed that loop with coaxial cable, the shield of which is grounded, you are in effect creating a DC short circuit between the center conductor of that cable and your ground. But if you would rather not do that and just want to feed a wire antenna of some sort or another, a random wire, the best thing to do is to make your wire as straight as you can and feed it in the center with your coaxial cable. Now here is your coaxial cable. The shield goes to one side of the wire uh, antenna and your center conductor goes to the other side. You should make it as long as you can, although you can if you must, if you have no other if you have a small attic, <laughs> you can bend the antenna like that off the sides, but it should ideally be fed in the center. Don't feed it at the end and just leave the, the uh, outer conductor of the coaxial cable free. Feed it in the center. Now, you're not going to have a very good uh, radio frequency ground in an antenna like this, except when you have resonance and that's only going to happen on a very specific set of frequencies so for all intents and purposes you're going to have to consider that you do not get a good RF ground here poor RF ground there's really no way around that you can and should ground the coax shield somewhere. It ideally in this kind of a situation at the radio. So here's your radio right here. You should ground that shield at the radio. But you should ground it and if you decide that instead you're able somehow to get a loop instead of a uh, just a wire you're going to be a little bit better off in the event of a nearby lightning strike creating what they call an electromagnetic pulse or EMP. That will, is a surge of current that occurs in all electrical conductors near a strike when there's a, a lightning bolt that hits you nearby. It doesn't have to make a direct hit, but if you've got that antenna as a loop like this, then at the low frequency, relatively low frequency of that EMP, you will provide some protection by grounding the center conductor of your coaxial cable, in effect, 
for DC. And that can help you uh, at your radio. There's another thing, because uh, if you happen to have an electromagnetic pulse of several thousand volts get into the antenna terminals of a shortwave radio receiver, you can probably imagine that that's not a real good state of affairs. But now there's another thing you can do here, and that is to get a small transmatch or antenna tuner such as the type that MFJ sells for low power ham radio operation, uh, a random wire tuner, and you just ground the shield of the coax to the chassis of that tuner and run the center conductor of the coax into the antenna terminal. And then connect that to your radio and adjust that tuner uh, for the best reception wherever you happen to tune this receiver. That will provide you with a couple of advantages. Number one, it will act somewhat as, uh, it will help to improve the efficiency of the antenna system overall, so you get better sensitivity in your system. And it will also provide a pre-selector type of action, which will help to reject signals at frequencies that you don't want to have come in. For example, if there's a very strong broadcast station nearby and it's creating trouble for you, uh, an AM or FM broadcast station, this tuner, th those frequencies are nowhere near the shortwave band, so this tuner will help to suppress that signal while letting the signals that you want to hear get in. So now he's also asking me, the, the viewer, uh, whether, uh, whether a counterpoise arrangement would benefit a receive-only setup in a space where a nearby Earth-type ground is not available. And that the answer is absolutely yes. C, as we would send in Morse code on ham radio, meaning absolutely yes. If you can get a counterpoise, the bigger the better. It will help a lot. And uh, now it, he talks about inductance in the wire lead running to the ground, and if the wire is too long, the inductive reactance will... He wonders if that will cause the ground connection it, to become ineffective. Well, in effect, yes, that, that is exactly what will occur. And you can, in fact, get devices that tune counterpoises <clears throat> to resonance at whatever frequency you want to hear. If you have a counterpoise connected to a, a tuner like this, in this very arrangement, this tuner will in effect help to tune your entire system. You simply adjust it until you get the best reception at the frequency that you want. I might conclude, but now I have a situation here where I've thought about putting an antenna in my attic and running a feed line down, a coaxial line down to the basement, the nerd cave, the cave, which is where my ham radio resides and will remain. In that case, I would uh, construct a system just like this. It can be a trick to get that feed line down into the cave from the attic. I don't have happen to live in a townhouse where they have any homeowner's restrictions, so I could actually run this cable out the window down the side of the house in the <clears throat> basement, uh, right uh, where the just above the ground at the ceiling of the basement and into my cave. Alternatively, I could try to run it down right next to one of the uh, water pipes. I might even drill some extra holes next to those pipes and run that cable down next to those pipes. So there's a lot of ways you can you can work that out, but I would suggest then a system like this uh, because that is what I would do and maybe someday will. In fact, this question may encourage me to do exactly this. Thanks. Keep the questions coming. Stan Gibalisco. W1GV signing off for now for all you shortwave listeners. Get into ham radio. It's a great hobby. 73, which means best regards in ham radio lingo. And so long for now.